Hey guys, welcome to my channel. So today's topic is really interesting. It's about how you can study veterinary abroad. So veterinary license exams are uh, the exams that provide you with a license to practice veterinary abroad or study veterinary abroad. This video is in collaboration with Vetsanya blog by Shubham Narwal, our junior from IVRI, and special thanks for this video to Dr. Sandeep Gulia sir. The first country in line is Australia. National Veterinary Examination, that is NVE, is the examination you need to sit on to practice vet in Australia and New Zealand. AVBC is the Veterinary License Granting Authority of Australia and New Zealand. NVE is conducted by AVBC for granting the license to those overseas graduates who are not exempted from the license test. Eligibility Criteria so the eligibility criteria is your degree should be recognized and hold registration in your country and language proficiency test with minimum standard scores as prescribed by AVBC. The English benchmark for eligibility is 7 bands in all 4 components of IELTS, grade B in all 4 components of OET and at least 24 in listening, 24 in reading, 27 in writing and 23 in speaking in TOEFL or 65 in each of the communicative skills of PTE that is Pearson Test of English. Once you've met all this eligibility criteria, you are now eligible to sit in the preliminary MCQ examination. What is the preliminary MCQ examination is? It is a multiple choice question based test usually conducted in one whole day consisting of two papers. Each paper should be completed within three hours. The first paper is the general knowledge of veterinary science based examination consisting of 120 questions and the second examination contains 100 questions testing your clinical reasoning skill. This is the division subject wise uh, the number the approximate number of questions uh, coming from pathology and clinical pathology and there is infectious diseases and surgical anesthesia or imaging principle the maximum number of questions are coming from this part Apart from that, public health is another important thing. Then you can see pharmacology or th uh, therapeutics is another important thing. And physiology and husbandry uh, and welfare is another important thing. Paper 2 Clinical Reasoning For each species, questions will be based on case presentation. And the species you must focus on are equine, cats, dogs, cattle, other ruminants, pig and poultry, pocket pets and birds and others. Final clinical examination. Once you pass the preliminary MCQ examination, then you are eligible for the final clinical examination and you may apply for the conditional re uh, registration so you can gain some clinical exposure before the final clinical examination. This examination usually tests the clinical skills and basic animal husbandry, sorry, animal handling skills. Most emphasis is placed on the dog, cattle, sheep, and horse. You will see mostly in these examinations, equine, companion animals, small animals uh, or small ruminants. These are the main focus you will see. This examination consists of 12 sections and each section has an average time between 1 to 2 hours. The candidates have expected to bring their own gum boots, scrubs, stethoscopes and other necessary items. 12 sections of the final exam as I discussed in the previous slide are here. So there, uh, the main focus here also you can see equine, companion animal, small animal. The eighth point you will see reproduction is for all species. USA and Canada. For USA and Canada, the very famous NAVLE exam is there. That is North America Veterinary License Examination. NAVLE is a license granting requirement in the USA and Canada. NAVLE is conducted by the International Council of Veterinary Assessment, that is ICVA. The eligibility for this exam is pre requirement up to step 3 of ECFVG or PAVE for being eligible to sit in the NAVLE exam. I'll discuss in detail in the next slide. For Canada, you have to sit in NEB, that is similar to ECFVG. What is ECFVG? ECFVG is a certification program by AVMA for the overseas veterinary graduates whose degrees are not accredited for the, from the AVMA. 
This program does not grant the license. Instead, it is meant for the educational prerequisite of certain types of employment. The examination contains four steps. First is enrollment, provide proof of educational qualification and ver verifying your credentials. Second is the English proficiency test. Third is the clinical sciences examination and basic sciences, basic and clinical sciences examination. 225 questions are there that is basically MCQ, matching, drag and drop and hotspot having 220 minute duration. This is the number of questions coming from each area. Uh, here you can see medicine has the most that is 50 to 55. After that, pharmacology, physiology and toxicology holds the second position. Step 4. CPE is a hands-on performance based on CPE for 3 days in 7 sections where clinical skills are examined by the assigned college. Before appearing in CPE, you should need some surgical experience that requires at least one ovarian hysterectomy as primary surgeon or uh, sorry and at least five additional surgical procedures as primary surgeon or assistant surgeon another important thing is specifically candidates are required to submit documents signed by one or more licensed veterinarian licensed to practice veterinary medicine in any international jurisdiction NEB follows the same procedure as of ECFVG only conducting authority changes from AVMA to PVM for Canada. PAVE, what is PAVE? PAVE is conducted by the AABSB and it is a pathway for the international veterinarian who possesses a degree from non-accredited veterinary college. This exam step 3 also pre prerequisites for the NABLA. Step 1. Check your jurisdiction. Step 2. English proficiency test. Step 3. Is a, a qualifying science exam which consists of 20, 200 multiple choice type questions within a 220 minute single block session. This is the blueprint of the examination where you can see diagnostics holds the first position and physiology and uh, medicine, ethics and communication holds the second position of importance. Step 4. Evaluated clinical experience. You should need to gain clinical examination, uh, sorry, experience in AVMA accredited college. You should need to find enrollment institutions listed on the website of your choice and fill the dues directly to the university and gain clinical experience there. Once you have passed, passed all the steps, you get the PAVE certificate. Once you had obtained your prerequisites, then the Navle exams prep start, which embraces six blocks, and each block consisting of 60 questions each, and 65 minutes will be allotted for each block. For syllabus, fee, and detailed information, you can check the links given in the description box. For United Kingdom, let's start. Before starting, I'd like to request all of you that please do subscribe my channel for more information and updates coming up and do share it with your friends such that more people are coming with that much of knowledge from abroad and bringing it here so that our country can prosper with that much of knowledge. RCVS, Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons. RCVS is not the name of the exam. Instead, it is the conducting authority that conducts the license exams for the veterinarian who graduated in foreign countries for granting the license to veterinary surgeons who want to practice in UK. The students holding BVET Med or BBSC and age degrees as most of us are having from countries except Canada, USA, South Africa, Europe, Australia, New Zealand must sit for the statutory membership examination conducted by RCVS once a year. Statutory membership examination. The first step is you should inform the RCVS of your intention to sit. Then you should meet the English requirements of the RCVS. It can be done either by uh, sitting in the IELTS exam or OET. You should need to score 7 bands in IELTS in each uh, 4 components or you can uh, be uh, achieving grade B in the listening, reading, writing and speaking sections of the veterinary version in OET. 
Once you achieve the minimum English requirement standards, then you should need to submit evidence of your good professional standing. The evidence of your good professional standing is issued on a form of a letter or a certificate by your veterinary licensing authority. And it should be notarized. If you are a recent graduate and you are currently not holding permanent registration, then the letter or certificate can be issued on behalf of the dean or the principal of the college where you had completed your primary veterinary education. Written exam. Written exams contain three clinical parts, companion animals, production animals and equine, as well as an examination related to RCVS code of professional conduct. The, uh, these exams will be uh, conducted in three consecutive days. The clinical part contains 315 multiple choice questions that test both reasoning and clinical knowledge of the candidate. Companion animals account for around 50% of the total questions. Production animals, including the veterinary public health, around 30% of the exam, while equines around 20%. One should need to clear the minimum standard score of all three parts. If you are just passing in one or two, it will not do. You will have to pass in all three. Failing in any one will not do. The clinical part of the written exam will be covered in the first two days with a total time of 8, year, eight hours. On the first day, exam for the companion animal part should be conducted with a total time of 4 hours duration starting at 10 am and there will be a lunch break from 12 pm to 1 pm. On the very next day, exams for the production animal and equines will be conducted. On the last day of the written examination, there will be an open book test that is MCQ based on the RCVS professional code of conduct that will be conducted for a time period of 2 hours and 15 minutes. In this test, there is no negative mark. OSCE that is Objective Structured Clinical Examination. The practical and clinical analysis test is conducted in the form of OSC. The exam is conducted usually for two days and contains 13 stations circuit which assesses your range of skills including handling of large animals, clinical skills, technical skills or surgical skills, injection techniques, communication, professionalism, clinical reasoning and other RCVS day one competence. 20 minutes is given for each station and it is the duty of the student itself to maintain the time at each station. The candidate is expected to bring his own stethoscope and wristwatch and the dress code for companion animals, production animals and equines is different. How to prepare for this examination? This is something that would allure all of you to be preparing for these examinations. So listen to this very carefully. Once you've met all the requirements laid down by RCVS and successfully obtained the intention to sit a certificate, then you will have access to the RCVS knowledge library. Imagine, you have the access to RCVS knowledge library. Examination candidates have given special access to the library which allows them to borrow the books for their preparation. The fee for the membership is £25 for six months. A special fee will be charged if you want them in your home via post. You may be eligible for the Reader's Pass of British Library Science Collection. Seeing practice the term used for... Um, this is a British Library Science Collection. Okay. Then apart from that, team practice a term used for gaining clinical and practical exposure in the UK is also given under the Veterinary Surgeons Practice by Students Amendment Regulations of 1993. Students preparing for the examination are eligible for seeing the practice. Isn't it amazing? So the regulations provide that students may examine animals, carry out diagnostic tests under the direction of a registered veterinary surgeon administer treatment under the supervision of a registered veterinary surgeon and perform surgical operations under the direct and continuous supervision of a registered veterinary surgeon. Thank you for watching this video. Please do share it with your friends so that more and more people can go, more talented people bring that much of knowledge to India and serve our country. So uh, please subscribe my channel and thank you for watching guys.